Hello and welcome back to this video series on global health ethics. My name is Greg Martin. In this episode, we're going to take a look at human rights. The idea of human rights is a relatively new idea. Following the atrocities of World War II, the UN General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And these were basically civil and political rights, like the right to vote, the right to free speech, and the right to assemble. Note that these rights are rights of individuals, and that when they're adopted, they need to be protected. This is in contrast to a more recently recognized category of human rights called economic, social, and cultural rights. And these are rights of people, not individuals. This second category of human rights are not meant to be protected per se, but rather proactively pursued. In other words, they're aspirational, they're normative, they're attained through a process that's called progressive realization. Now, of relevance to this discussion is the fact that the right to the highest attainable health falls in this second group of human rights. Now, the difference between a human right and something that we all just believe is a good idea is that with respect to human rights, global civil society recognizes an individual or, or a community's entitlement to assert that right when they're being denied access to it or protect them from factors that prevent them from asserting that right. So, for example, do we believe that it's a good idea that everyone in the world be able to access satellite TV? Sure, it's a lovely idea, but it's not a human right. We're not all committed to taking action that ensures that all people can access satellite TV. By contrast, do we believe that all people have the right to be protected from torture? Are we collectively committed to ensuring that individuals' entitlement to that right can be asserted? And the answer is yes. Well, by and large, most of us are. Now, health is a little bit tricky. Do we believe that all people have the right to be healthy? Do all HIV positive people have the right to be HIV negative? Do all babies born with congenital birth defects have the right to be physically normal? Well, not really. However, do all people have the right to information and care that would prevent them from contracting HIV? Do all mothers have the right to be protected from teratogenic drugs like thalidomide that cause birth defects? Well, yes. Now there, we do collectively all commit to ensure that all people are able to exercise those entitlements. The 1946 Constitution of the World Health Organization states that the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic or social condition. Now, including the right to health in the WHO Constitution does not in and of itself make it a human right. What is noteworthy, and this is important, is the fact that every nation has ratified and so reflected in their national legislature at least one international human rights treaty that recognizes the right to health. By ratifying these treaties, governments, and by implication we as civil society, are committed to ensuring that people are able to assert these rights and entitlements and that they can access things like safe drinking water, adequate sanitation, safe food, healthy environmental conditions, health-related information, and gender equality. We're also committed to protecting certain freedoms, like the right to be free from non-consensual medical treatment, like medical experiments or research or forced sterilization, and freedom from torture and other degrading treatments or punishments. We also all agree that everyone has the right to basic health services and essential medicines, and they have that in a way that doesn't discriminate on the basis of gender, age, race, socioeconomic status, and that the health services are available, accessible, acceptable, and of good quality. The bottom line when it comes to human rights is that the strength of a right is based on the commitment to protect that right by the group of people who recognize the right and its members. So if we want to call something a human right, then we humanity need to take actions to make sure that that right is accessible and can be accessed by the people in our group, the rest of humanity. In the absence of such a commitment, then we really are just talking about something we seem to think is a good idea and not a right at all. Now, clearly this is a bigger issue than we can summarize just in a few minutes talk. But I really hope that what I've just talked about is a, is, is a good start and an overview of the concept of human rights and that this idea of rights can be added to our toolbox that we're using to better understand global health ethics. In the next episode, we're going to define the idea of exploitation. Remember that you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and get an email alert whenever there's a new episode posted. 
Please feel free to post your thoughts and comments below. I'd love to hear what you think about human rights and health. Thanks for listening.